This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another Deck History, the series where I trace prominent deck archetypes from their beginnings all the way to the present day. As usual, a poll determined the topic of this video. Because we're getting close to Halloween, I gave my viewers a choice between various spooky tribes and zombies won out. As with most tribal decks, zombie decks tend to be aggro decks that run a bunch of payoffs for playing zombies. Zombies are one of the game's most plentiful creature types and they're the characteristic race for black. This means that they appear on most planes and embody the flavor of black as a color. This means that they've received a lot of tribal support over the years, dating all the way back to the very beginning of Magic. Alpha contained a zombie payoff in Zombie Master, which gave all zombies Swamp Walk and the ability to regenerate. Zombie decks of one kind or another have found success in two separate standard formats, Modern and Legacy. And in this video, we'll take a look at each of those decks and discuss how and why they've changed over time. Before we get into talking about zombie decks as competitively viable, I wanted to talk a little bit about zombie prehistory. That is, zombies as a tribe before they found competitive success. And there's actually a pretty long period of zombie prehistory. Magic has been around since 1993, but it wasn't until 2012 that the first zombie deck top aided a premiere event. As I mentioned earlier, zombies received a fair bit of tribal support over the years, including the aforementioned Zombie Master way back in 1993. The next zombie payoff appeared in 1997's Tempest in the form of Sarcomancy. This gave you a one-mana 2-2 zombie, and as long as you controlled a zombie, there wasn't really any downside. Both of these zombie payoffs from the 1990s are pretty unimpressive on the whole, so it isn't really a huge surprise that zombies didn't have enough to be a competitive tribe at this point. From 2001 on though, zombies started to receive much more consistent support. Invasion Block was the first to have a pretty significant zombie theme, and lots of new payoffs showed up, including a new zombie lord in Lord of the Undead, who was a major improvement over Zombie Master. Other zombie payoffs in the block included Deadapult, which could launch zombies at things to do damage, and Grave Defiler, which lets you put zombies into your hand from the first few cards of your library. Subsequent sets also included one or two additional zombie payoffs, but it still wasn't really enough for zombies to be a competitively viable tribe. From 2002 to 2003, the three Onslaught block sets were released, and this was a big deal for zombies, because it was the first set to go really hard on zombies. The block as a whole was a tribal one, and all three sets in the block were packed to the brim with zombie payoffs. We're not going to go over every single one of these zombie synergies, but some of the more notable ones include Undead Warchief, a new zombie lord that gave a nice buff and reduced the cost of zombies, Graveborn Muse, which drew you more cards the more zombies you had in play, and Noxious Ghoul, which gave non-zombies minus one minus one every time a zombie entered the battlefield. You'd think that maybe that would be enough to finally make zombies into a thing in competitive magic, but it still didn't happen. This is largely because, of the Onslaught tribes, goblins were just miles better, and zombies couldn't really contend with them. For the next several years, zombies received intermittent support, including new zombie lords like Death Baron and Cemetery Reaper, but it would take all the way until 2011 and 2012's Innistrad block for zombies to become a real player in competitive magic. Like Onslaught block, Innistrad block was a tribal one, but it was a set with a gothic horror theme, so all the tribes are pretty spooky. And zombies were one of these very well-supported tribes, and this time around, they got enough to be pretty powerful. And now, with that discussion of zombie prehistory out of the way, we can finally proceed towards the beginning of zombie history in the standard of 2012. We're actually going to break the discussion of standard zombies into two parts because they became a tier 1 deck in two different standard formats that were separated by several years. The first one, though, was Innistrad Standard from 2012 to 2013. At 2012's Grand Prix Baltimore, Matt Scott became the first player to pilot a zombie deck to a top 8 finish at a premier event. His deck was made up almost entirely of cards from Innistrad block, which makes sense since that's where all the good zombies were. Matt's deck was a blue-black zombie deck. Innistrad block introduced a powerful new zombie lord in Diagraph Captain, who not only pumped all your zombies, but also made it so any other zombie dying hurts your opponent. 
It was actually pretty nice that it had Death Touch too, because this meant in a pinch, you could send it into combat or block with it, and the best your opponent is going to do is trade. The other major zombie payoff in the deck was Gravecrawler. This one mana 2-1 couldn't block, but it could also be cast from your graveyard if you had a zombie in play, and Matt's deck had about 20 zombies, so that was just going to be the case most of the time. And remember Gravecrawler, because it's going to be a card that ties a lot of these different zombie decks together. The deck could just win with an aggressive curve out, since it had access to powerful aggressive zombies like Dire Graf Ghoul and Garalf's Messenger, but it also had a secondary plan that could really abuse Gravecrawler's recursion, and that was putting Mortar Pot on it. You could sacrifice it a couple of times every turn to finish off your opponent if they managed to clog up the board. This blue-black variant of zombies was the primary form the deck took on for the next several months, and it found significant success at various Grand Prix. Later in 2012, some new variants of the deck emerged. Chris Schaefer had a great day one at Grand Prix Minneapolis with his Zombie Pod deck. His deck had a similar core to the blue-black version of the deck, but it added in Birthing Pod. This powerful artifact could be used to sacrifice a creature to search your library for a creature with a mana value one higher than the creature that was sacrificed. This worked really well with Gravecrawler, since it could keep coming back, and with Garalf's Messenger, since it would come back once. You could basically add additional stuff to the board without actually subtracting from it. It made use of Blood Artist to take advantage of all the sacrificing, and this could be particularly potent if you searched up your Falcon Wrath Aristocrat, since it could do a ton of damage out of nowhere. This version of the deck wasn't the one that found a ton of success, but some of its innovations would be absorbed into podless zombie decks. Zombie decks, at this point, became a little less focused on zombie synergy, and they transitioned into a black-red build. The decks were still loaded up with zombies, but the only major zombie payoff the decks tended to have was Gravecrawler, and many decks were largely built around finding ways to abuse it. By mid-2012, zombie decks in Standard had transitioned into a black-red build, and they combined several sacrifice effects with Gravecrawler and Blood Artist. Jaclord Nerez was the first to pilot one of these new black-red zombie decks to a top-8 finish at a major event, which he did at Grand Prix Manila in 2012. This is largely what zombie decks looked like for the remainder of 2012 and into 2013. Felipe Tapia Baseria would be the last player to top 8 with a zombie deck in the standard of 2012 and 2013, and he accomplished this at Grand Prix Warsaw. By this time, Return to Ravnica block had been released, and Scars of Mirrodin block had rotated out of the format, and the deck did start to look a bit different. The core of the deck was still about Gravecrawler, Falconrath Aristocrat, and Blood Artist, but it was now a Jun deck. This gave the deck access to two powerful new zombies, Lotleth Troll and Dregmangler. The troll especially comboed nicely with Gravecrawler because you could discard it and then still play the crawler from your graveyard. This would mark the end of the impressive run that zombie decks had in the standard of 2012 to 2013, but as I hinted earlier, this wouldn't be the last time that zombies were relevant in the format. For now though, let's look at some other formats where zombie decks emerged. First, let's look at Legacy. I do want to say up front that zombie decks are not something that has been consistently successful in Legacy. They've only achieved a couple of top 8s in the format overall. The first of these came in 2012 when Sam Black top 8'd Grand Prix Atlanta with his zombie bombardment deck. Like what we saw in Standard, this deck was largely built around abusing Gravecrawler and Blood Artist. However, Legacy had a much larger card pool, and there were better ways to combo off, in particular, Goblin Bombardment and Carrion Feeder. You could combine Gravecrawler and Blood Artist with either of these free sacrifice effects to do a ton of damage in a hurry. For the next Legacy Top 8, we have to fast forward to 2018, when Miyamoto Yohei piloted another zombie bombardment deck to a Top 8. It had been six years, so the deck was significantly different from what came before it, but it was still centered around Gravecrawler and Goblin Bombardment. It did add Bridge from Below to the mix, so now you could sacrifice Gravecrawler over and over and also get a zombie token every time you did it, and then you could also sacrifice those zombie tokens. That's mostly it for Zombies and Legacy, though. We will come back to this format briefly, as later in this video we're going to look at Hogok decks in a variety of formats, and as we'll see, Gravecrawler's zombie synergy was important there, too. For now, let's take a look at the second time that zombie decks emerged as top tier in Standard. In 2016, we returned to Innistrad block with Shadows over Innistrad, and it went right back to the tribal synergies we knew from our first visit to the plane, which meant that Zombies got a whole lot of new cards, and this helped spawn a new standard version of Zombies. However, the new Zombie synergies and Shadows over Innistrad block were not enough on their own to lead to a new Zombie deck. 
It took another block with a zombie focus to really make that happen. In 2017, Amonkhet block came out and it also had a pretty heavy zombie theme and there was now an embarrassment of riches for zombie decks in Standard. Shadows over Innistrad block and Amonkhet block were only in Standard together for part of 2017, but during that time, zombie decks were pretty awesome. This first became clear at Pro Tour Amonkhet in 2017, where three of the top eight decks at the event were zombie decks. Let's take a look at Jerry Thompson's mono black zombie deck, which won the whole event. The zombie decks of the standard of 2017 are definitely the zombiest decks we've ever seen, as almost every single creature in the deck featured some zombie payoff. Crypt Breaker gave you the ability to generate zombie creature tokens, and you could tap three zombies to pay one life and draw a card. Diagraph Colossus came down bigger the more zombies you had in play, and anytime you cast a zombie, you got a zombie token. Lord of the Accursed was a zombie lord that could also give your zombies menace. Metallic Mimic wasn't exactly a zombie, but if you named zombie with it, your zombies would come with plus and plus one counters on them. Relentless Dead had nice aggressive stats and could reanimate zombies when it died. There was also Liliana's Mastery, which pumped all of your zombies while giving you additional zombie tokens, and Dark Salvation, which you could use as a potent removal spell, and if you had extra mana, you could also make some additional zombies. You could see how this deck can just curve out for insane value for an early aggro kill, but you can also see that it could grind out value if its initial wave of aggression didn't work out. One of the other zombie decks the top 8 Pro Tour Amonkhet was a bit different from Jerry's. Chris Fennell's version of the deck was black-white and leaned a little harder in the direction of the Amonkhet zombies. In that block, black-white was the zombie color pair. By going white, he gained access to both Wayward Servant and Binding Mummy. The Servant drained a life every time a zombie entered the battlefield under your control, and Binding Mummy tapped down an opposing creature every time a zombie entered the battlefield, which is a pretty good way to push through damage. For the most part, though, the standard zombie decks of 2017 looked more like Jerry Thompson's and were mono black. If we fast forward all the way to the last mono black zombie deck to top 8 an event, you can see that the deck changed very little in the remaining months that it was viable in standard. That marked the end of zombie decks in standard. While the current set and the next set are both set on Innistrad, they seem to have pulled back somewhat on the tribal theme we knew before, and there aren't nearly as many zombie synergies this time around although maybe more could show up in Crimson Vow. If that's the case, we could see zombies rise again in Standard. There is still one little wrinkle regarding competitive zombies that I want to talk about, and that's Hogak Summer. Modern Horizons printed the absurdly powerful Hogak Arisen Necropolis, and while the decks were not zombie decks, they were decks that really loved Gravecrawler, and thus they ran a decent number of zombies to utilize it. Hogak decks utilizing Gravecrawler emerged in both Modern and Legacy, and utterly dominated Modern especially until Hogak itself was banned, eliminating the deck from the format. That's generally why it's called Hogak Summer, because Wizards pretty quickly put an end to the deck in Modern, and it only lasted a single season. I'm not going to go super deep on this, since these decks were only barely zombie decks if they were zombie decks at all, but I wanted to show you a Modern deck list. Obviously, Hogak decks were graveyard decks. They sought to rapidly load the graveyard and populate the battlefield so that Hogak could be cast for free. Gravecrawler was obviously a great fit here, since along with Bridge from Below and Altar of Dementia, it could contribute a whole lot of bodies to the board. Other key zombies in the deck were Carrion Feeder and Stitcher's Supplier. The Feeder could gobble up Gravecrawler every turn as many times as you had mana for, and Stitcher's Supplier could contribute seven cards to the graveyard all on its own. Hogak himself, as well as Bridge from Below, ultimately ended up being banned out of Modern, and that put an end to this type of deck. It is worth noting that Hogak decks are still a thing in Legacy today, and they look pretty similar to what we've seen. Legacy, in general, has been a format that's powerful enough to compete with Hogak's power, unlike Modern. So, that's a history of zombie decks. They have dominated two different standard formats, and one zombie in particular, Gravecrawler, has been a key card in various decks and graveyard decks in both Modern and Legacy. Right now, there isn't really a zombie deck available in Standard, but maybe that will change with Crimson Vow. That does it for this deck history. If you want to have a say in next week's topic, which will be about another spooky tribe, don't forget to vote on the poll in the community tab. If you want to stay aware of new videos in this series and lots of other content I put out, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you want to catch up on the 19 other deck history videos, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. Lastly, if you want to support the channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.